I wanted to do a brief walkthrough with you on how to do the milestone. So from the home page in Brightspace, go to course menu and go to learning modules. And it's really important that you always click through the module and read everything carefully. So as I mentioned in my announcements, start here, read all of this information. This is how you get to the text. This is how you get to the homework. When you're done, you go click there. And remember that the system will mark, will say you've completed this once you've viewed the page. So you might want to be careful about uh, just because you click on this, if you get pulled away or something, the system's going to say, oh, look, you viewed this topic. That doesn't mean you've done everything. So uh, I'm going to click through here because I want to make sure I get to um, the, yeah, this is what I wanted to talk about. So sometimes this, uh, project can be overwhelming and that's why we break it into milestones even the milestone can be a little overwhelming so let's start by looking at this so remember you go to your job offers in your track and your job offers comparison worksheet that you finished for um, module two and you're not selecting a job offer but you're going to need those job offers in your worksheet to complete this assignment so when you click on this you'll download this file I already downloaded it, so I'm not going to. And then you're gonna open this file. And then I'm gonna show you kind of how this works. And then I also wanna show you the rubric so you know kind of what the standard is and what's expected of you. So first you put your name here. And then you read this, okay, here's the scenario. You're gonna finish your bachelor's degree and you've got these job opportunities. And so you're gonna analyze each employment opportunity. So remember, this is based on your job offer comparison worksheet. And then the first box that you fill in, you can leave this here and then fill this out. And so notice that in the rubric you see here in this section of your milestone you will focus on the opportunities presented in the discipline area of interest so that's your job track humanities communication or design and then you're going to outline the characteristics that are most important to you in your job search and then to be proficient you just have to outline the characteristics explain your reasoning that's it so if you want 100 percent you have to outline the job characteristics and explain your reasoning now, if you look at location, you need to compare the jobs in terms of distance and commute and consider the impact each would have on your day-to-day -day life. And now, if the jobs aren't anywhere near where you are, would you be willing to relocate? So you, it's either commute or relocate. And so remember that this is a fake job. This isn't something that you're actually going to do. So use your imagination a little bit, if that makes sense. And remember, you want to show your calculations. So for the location, look at what the rubric says. Compares the jobs in terms of distance, commute, and impact each would have on day-to-day -day life and explain your considerations showing calculations. So you want to look at each job, if you're going to relocate for it, what's that going to cost you? And you don't have to be super detailed, you just have to give an estimate. What would it cost for you to rent a moving van and uh, how much mileage would it cost? So get a rough estimate of those types of costs. Or if you're going to commute to the job, what would it cost you in commuting? Are you going to ride the bus? Does the job provide anything in terms of transportation? Are you going to drive? So just keep that in mind. Now for the salary, you're going to go, you're going to find the occupational area on bls.gov. And so this is also linked here on the Brightspace bls.gov. So you go here and then search for your job. Let's say that you're the teacher's assistant. And then, oh, no, I've been putting it, I put in a help ticket for this before, but if you chose the teacher's assistant position, it's supposed to be Chels Chelmsford, Massachusetts, not Chelmsford, Iowa. Chelmsford, Massachusetts is actually a place. So let's try teacher's assistant and see what we can find. Okay, we don't want to give you your feedback. So teacher assistants. So let's see what teacher assistants make. So here's 2019 median pay. So I would definitely recommend using this information 
in your uh, calculating your salary. Calculate what a reasonable salary would be for each job using the BLS website and explain how you determine your figure. So if you think you should get the median pay, that's fine. Explain why. If you think you should get more, explain why. If you think you should get less, explain why. Okay, now we go back to the worksheet. Calculate the starting income each position will provide after taxes using an estimated flat tax rate of 30%. I know nobody pays a flat tax, but just for the purposes of making this a manageable assignment, we're going to do that. So after a tax rate of 30%, so you're going to calculate your tax rate of 30%. And I just want to show you something real quick. Let's say you use that 27,920 figure. 27,920. Now, if you want to find the tax on that, you can do that calculation. Now, don't... So if you do that, let's say you do that. Let's just run that real quick. 27,920 times 0 0.3 is 8,376. Now... Don't write equals and then subtract that from 27,920. Go semicolon 27,920 minus 8,376 equals so 27,920 minus 8,376. That's your salary after the flat tax. So now you've done your salary for one job. Then what would your what would your annual income be at the five year mark? So this means let's label it this way. Year one. Year five. So you take twenty seven thousand nine hundred twenty. And now I want to show you a different way to do this if you want to. Notice that 100% minus 32% is 68%. So if you want to calculate it, the salary immediately, you can multiply by 68%. That's what you get after paying a flat tax of 32%. So you write this as 0.68. And it, you can do it either way. I don't care. So we've got $18,985.60. And do include the zero because we're talking about dollars and cents. So then this is for, uh, let's organize it this way, teacher assistant, year one, year five. Now you repeat that for the other two jobs. Now, were you to have information about the salaries of various levels of employment, what would you use, mean, median, or mode, to calculate your expected salary? That's where you go back to module three and you read or perhaps reread. That's a very reasonable thing to do. You go to measures of dispersion here. We sorry, we just recently discovered the Internet here in Montana. And so you're talking about here what a measure of dispersion is. And actually, I think we want to be on the next page. My apologies. Um, I don't think this is it either. Oh, no, that's that's it. Nope, just kidding. I think it's on the next page. I'm sorry. I thought I had this ready to go. Thank you for your patience, which borders on the eternal. And, ah, nope, just kidding. That's not what I want. Uh, no, that's not what I want. But anyways, if you go back to um, learning about the mean, median, and mode... That's, that comes up in the reading. And so you have to decide whether you would want the mean, median, or mode to calculate your expected salary. And so please, pretty please do not say, I would take the mean because it's the average, because that doesn't mean anything. Huh, mean, get it? So the mean is where we add all the salaries and divide by the number of salaries. The median salary is the middle salary when the salaries are ordered from smallest to greatest. 
the mode is the most frequently occurring salary. So you need to use those conceptual definitions to explain why you'd want the mean. You might say, well, the mean salary is an estimate of the center. And so I think that would be a good estimate. But I would argue it's not a good estimate because if you only know the mean salary, you don't know anything about the distribution. So if one person makes $100,000 a year and everybody else makes $10,000 a year, that would not be a good choice. Personally, I would argue for the median salary because the median salary is the center and is not influenced by really large or really small salaries. So whatever you say, just make sure you give an explanation that's based on the definitions of these terms in the text. Please do not say I would choose the mean because it's the average. That's not, that doesn't mean anything. For the benefits, remember that all of this information is in the job offer comparison, uh, in, in the job offer letters. So you have to determine how much savings you will have at three different points in time, after five years, after 10 years, and after 20 years. And again, you have to use the options provided by each employer in the letters. And remember, if your employer matches your contributions, assume you'll put aside the maximum. If they don't have any retirement option, you're not off the hook. You just assume you put aside 5% of your pre-tax salary each year. Explain how you got your results. You can type your computations. You can use a spreadsheet. Whatever you want to do, just show how you did it. Then make sure you compare the insurance plans offered and how much you would be expected to cover. Make sure you think about your personal situation. Do you have children? Are you single? Uh, what are you going to do? And that's milestone one. Please, pretty, pretty, please contact me if you have any questions. I really am happy to help. And don't feel like you're bothering me. It's really much easier for me to answer a question up front than it is for you to guess and uh, not complete the assignment correctly and then for me to try and figure out where you went wrong. So please don't feel like you're bothering me. It helps you. It helps me. It helps everyone. I hope you're having a great day. Take care.